Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about cloud computing and its different types of service models, their characteristics and key differences. So let's get started. Before we go into cloud computing, let's discuss what does cloud mean? Cloud refers to a network or internet. It can be public or private network. The term compute describes concepts and objects related to software computation. It is a generic term used to reference processing power, memory, networking, storage, and other required services for the computational success of any program. So cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. Now let's look at some of the benefits of cloud computing. Cost. It reduces cost since it follows the pay-as-you-go pricing model, meaning you pay only for the service you use. Global scale. Due to their presence all around the world, you have the ability to create resources right when they are needed and in multiple geographic locations. Speed. Most cloud computing services are provided self-service and on-demand. So even vast amount of computing resources can be provisioned in minutes, typically with just a few mouse clicks, giving businesses a lot of flexibility and taking the pressure of capacity planning. Security. Cloud providers offer a broad set of policies, technologies, and control that strengthen your security posture overall, helping protect your data, apps, and infrastructure from potential threats. Reliability. Cloud computing makes data backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity easier and less expensive because data can be mirrored at multiple redundant sites on the cloud provider network. Now that we know what is cloud computing and what are its benefits, let's look at its service models. First one is infrastructure as a service or IaaS. In this type of service model, vendor manages the infrastructure while you purchase, install, configure, and manage your own infrastructure, including operating system, middleware, and applications. You basically rent the IT infrastructure. Some of the scenarios where business chooses IAS can be, your business wants to do a lift and shift migration rather than refactoring the underlying architecture. If your website has fluctuating traffic, then you can benefit from this as underlying infrastructure can scale to unpredictable demands. IAS is useful for backing up, storing, and recovering data, and also help in managing fluctuating storage needs, which is hard to manage on-premise. Some of the examples of IAS are Azure Virtual Machine, storage, or networking. Let's look at some of the advantages of IAS model before we look at other cloud computing service models. Migrating your organization's infrastructure to an IAS solution helps you reduce maintenance of on-premise data centers, saving money on hardware costs and gain real-time business insights. IAS solutions give you the flexibility to scale your IT resources up and down with demand. They also help you quickly provision new applications and increase the reliability of your underlying infrastructure by providing you with better disaster recovery options and enhanced security. Second type of cloud computing service model is PaaS or platform as a service. PaaS is designed to make it easier for developers to quickly create web or mobile apps without worrying about setting up or managing the underlying infrastructure needed for development. When deploying an application using PaaS, then you don't have to install an operating system 
web server or even system updates but you can scale and add new features to your services as and when needed some of the examples of pass are azure web apps functions or azure sql db let's now look at some of the advantages of pass model PaaS development tools can cut the time it takes to code new apps with pre-coded application components built into the platform, such as workflow, directory services, security features, search, and so on. Because the development environment is accessed over the internet, development teams can work together on projects even when team members are in remote locations. Some service providers give you development options for multiple platforms, such as computers, mobile devices, and browsers, making cross-platform apps quicker and easier to develop. SaaS is the final of the three types of cloud computing service models, also called as software as a service. With SaaS, Cloud providers host and manage the software application and underlying infrastructure and handle any maintenance like software updates, security patching. Users just connect to the application over the internet, usually with a browser on their phone, tablet, or PC. Some of the examples of SaaS that you are most likely using in your day-to-day -day life are Microsoft Office 365, Gmail, or even Dropbox. Some of the advantages of SaaS model include with data stored in the cloud, users can access their information from any internet connected computer or mobile device. And when app data is stored in the cloud, no data is lost if a user's computer or device fails. You can even save money because the SaaS service automatically scales up and down according to the level of usage. SaaS makes it easy to mobilize your workforce because users can access SaaS apps and data from any internet connected computer or mobile device. You don't need to worry about developing apps to run on different types of computers and devices because the service provider has already done so for you. Now let's look at how these three models fit into the overall cloud computing picture. So let's look at an example to differentiate between different models. And you might see these type of questions in your fundamental exam as well. So let's say you have two scenarios. In one scenario, you have SQL installed on an Azure VM. And in the second scenario, you have an Azure SQL database. With SQL installed on an Azure VM, you are just renting the underlying infrastructure. That is physical data center, your networking, and your storage. So that is the reason it becomes an example of IaaS. Because essentially, you are just renting a VM and installing SQL in, on top of it. But when we talk about an Azure SQL database, everything will be taken care by Azure. So it becomes a pass offering. But it is still different from SaaS because in SaaS, your whole layer is managed by the cloud provider. Now let's look at the final topic in this session, which is shared responsibility model in cloud. When you are in on-premise model, then the whole responsibility lies with you. Whether it is the physical data center security, whether it is operating system patching, everything is managed and owned by you. But when you move to cloud, some of the responsibilities 
are moved to the cloud provider and some remain with you and some can be shared responsibility. So let's first look at IAS. When you move into an IAS model, basically the physical host security, the physical network security, or the data center security. These three things move to cloud providers responsibility. Rest everything is still under your responsibility. But when we talk about PaaS, as I was mentioning in my previous example as well, that when you have a SQL database installed on VM compared to an Azure SQL database, the, dif the main difference there was that with, the, with Azure SQL database, the operating system and everything is managed by vendor. So that's what you can see here. As soon as you move into PaaS model, on top of what you get with IAS, you get something extra as well. For example, your operating system is managed by the cloud vendor. But when it comes to network controls, applications, or identity and directory infrastructure, it is a shared responsibility. Now let's see what exactly the shared responsibility means here. So when it comes to network controls, for example, the network around SQL, I'm taking the example which we discussed in our previous slide. So you will be responsible for managing who can access your SQL instance, but Azure will be responsible for managing this underlying infrastructure, the access to underlying infrastructure, who can access the underlying infrastructure, but you will be responsible for managing who can access your instance. Does that make sense? I hope it is. Now moving to SaaS. In SaaS model, which is software as a service. Your application is also managed by the cloud provider. You don't have access to underlying infrastructure. You don't have access to the background of the application, but shared responsibility is identity and directory infrastructure. Basically, who can access your application? You have to go and set up who can access your application what level of access users are going to have in that application. And Azure is going to manage how the application is set up in background. Who, who has the system admin access on the application to make changes? That is also part of identity and access management, but it is on Azure's part. Whereas access to application is on your part. Regardless of the model you choose to adopt, responsibility of your information and data and identity management always lies with you. That's all I had for this topic. If you have any doubts, then please post them in the comment section. And thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.